once I put my head in the water, it's just quiet. Most of the time, I'm all by myself. I'm swimming up and down the swimming pool with my own thoughts. My name is Iyad Masood, and I'm living in New Zealand. I am a professional swimmer. I'm a mechanical engineer. My earliest memories is my dad trying to, trying to teach me how to swim in the ocean. I had a rash suit on, so he was grabbing the rash suit from behind. He was like, move your legs and leave your arms. And I was like swallowing water and it wasn't funny. And, and my dad was like, you need to move your legs. I was like, I'm just trying to breathe. <laughs> Syria was, in my memory, is the most beautiful place in the world where I felt I belonged. Everything felt natural. Uh, we were very tight, very close to each other. You know, all your neighbors. Since the war started in Syria, it exerts a lot of stress on myself and my family, particularly my parents. I always look back at that you could have never expected it. It just happened way too quick and it just escalated way too big. From there on, he never, he never let me down. He always got my back. He used to always tell me, my brain, your muscles. So I never questioned his training and he trusted me when I performed. I still don't know what he saw in me that made him want to help me so bad. So he brought me here, he put food on my table. He provided me with a place to provide me with advice, guidance, mentorship, friendship and most importantly, a sense of family. David had the biggest impacts on my life that I could ever imagine. And it took me quite a while to just get over the fact that he's not there anymore. I really felt lost. And it took me a while to admit it. I've decided to get back onto it do what he would want me to do and live with this life as if he was just watching over me and hopefully we'll get to where he wanted me to be at some point. Oh, I'm snacking all the time. I'm like, I got heaps of snacks in my bag. I got snacks in the office. I got snacks in the car. Swimming so, mean, definitely helped me process a lot of that trauma along the way because it provided me with a platform where I can set goals and focus on achieving it. And once I achieve it, I do feel better about myself. My message to all the refugees around the world is don't give up, don't let them take your dreams away. You can dream and you can aim high and really work for it. Everybody is talented somehow, some way.